Users can customize the different aspects or details of connections to include Mora's bolts, thicker or larger plates, different size angles, etc. This will all be done through the connection edit window under design details. When design details are first opened, you may notice the available fields are grayed out or in a read-only state. Currently, SDS2 Connect is simply displaying the values that it designed. To the right, you can see a picture with the different corresponding dimensions, which can be very helpful to, to determine which field may need to be changed. Also, across the top of the window, some connections will have several different tabs. Typically, one tab for each piece of material that makes up the connection. To edit the values shown, select the checkbox in the upper right hand corner of the window, User Connection. Once this is done, you can see the fields are now available to change. Before we begin changing fields, it is important to understand that at this point, SDS2 Connect is no longer designing the connection. The design of the connection is in the user's control once user connection is selected. Once the user has changed different values in the connection edit window, SDS2 Connect will do a check on the connection and this can be seen in the design calculations report later. However, this allows for an insufficient connection to be designed if incorrect values are input. Another thing to take note of is when a field is selected you may see arrows appear by other fields. This indicates that changing the selected field will have an effect on and possibly update the fields with arrows pointing to them. As an example in this case with a simple bolted clip angle connection if the vertical to first hole web value is selected, notice the arrows next to vertical first hole outstanding leg near side and top of near side angle. This means these fields will be affected by changing the value selected. So I change that to two and a half. We can see it updated and we see that clip angle moved up a half an inch. Now looking at the design calculations report, we can see this is noted as a user connection. SDS2 Connect does do a check on the connection and the limit states reported should reflect the correct values using what the user input. To reiterate that an insufficient connection can be designed, I will input one row of bolts. Taking note of the uh, maximum shear load. Once I click OK, this connection is redesigned. I will edit the connection again and take note of the maximum shear load now called out after I made that change and the connection was redesigned. If I take a look at the design calculations report we can see this is noted as a user connection again and we can see the limiting factor is the connection block shear. It is also important to know that once the user connection box is selected options changed in the connection edit window typically do not change the connection. This is because the user is now in control of the connection design for that 
So SDS2 Connect cannot make the change. If something has to be changed, user connection may need to be unchecked, the change made, and then changes made in design details. So once I take this off a of user connection, the change that I made previously to be attached to the supporting member will take effect. We could make the changes in design details. When I click OK, I can tell that change is taken into effect by the cope that is now in the bottom flange of the beam for erection purposes. Design details are available for all the connections that are designed by SDS2 Connect, including end plates, moment connections, splices, brace connections, etc. Thank you for watching the SDS2 Connect user connections tutorial.